Hey guys, Yoey Chase on. All right, today we have a sighting from Mount Cotton. Um, also, we're going to talk about some other sightings in that general area. But also today, posted in my Yoey sightings group was a um, a message from a lady who lives up at Springbrook, I believe, and seen. Um, somebody go into the national park in a regrowthing area i don't know what they've done in there um they had fires going during the night um changed locks on gates um pretty embarrassing behavior to all those people that try to do the right thing um now this lady has reported and taken photographs of these people and sent them off to the national parks that's all I know about it. I don't know who it is. Um, but whoever you are, you're a dead set embarrassment to the Yowie community. You need to be ashamed of yourself. You imagine now every time when people are out now, the rangers are going to be on to us because of this. Anyway, you want to have a good think about what you just did. It's absolutely disgusting what you've done. Um, the lady hasn't told us anymore, but... Whoever you are, you need to hang your head in shame. Absolutely unbelievable. And who goes around changing gates, putting chains and locks on the gate? I don't know if that can be proved, but the lady said that they're going to take the chain and the lock off. And I, and like I said, apparently um, they've destroyed regrowthing areas or something. I don't know. She hasn't said too much. Uh, now to that lady, I hope you don't think it's come from this my group. Yeah, we saw things Australia because it definitely hasn't. We wouldn't do that. All right, now we'll go on to the sighting at Mount Cotton. Oh, actually, actually, before I do, guys, I'll tell you something else. So, um, I've been pretty busy. Um, so I had a job. So yeah, I had a job up at Kadungra the other day. Oh, Wifren, sorry. So it was just up the road from where um where Glenn had his um Yowie sighting come out of the monastery, coming down the road. You all know the story. Seen a rock on the road, blah blah blah. So I went into another place. It's like a it's a guy. He's got a hundred acres there. Um, and he's he subdivided the blocks into acre blocks. So I'm going to be doing a, a lot of work around there lately soon. I've already started. <laughs> Good place, eh? Hey? Um. So yeah, as I was leaving the other day, there was a guy just I had the I had the driveway blocked, and a guy was driving in. I said, "Oh, here you go, mate." He couldn't get past me, and um, I said, "There you go, mate." He goes, "Yeah, good." I said, "You haven't seen any yowies, have you?" And then he he's in his car and he's trying to like spread his hands apart to say, "Look, I found this footprint here down here on on this property." So, you know, it was probably, I don't know, 18, 20 inches the way he was moving his hands. I said, oh, have you heard any? He goes, oh, I've heard a few things, nothing too much. Um, But he said, yeah, this thing was huge. Then he he was telling me that he was down at the um laundromat. It must be in Kanunga, I believe. I don't know. And he said he ran into these army guys down there that live on army land. So they all must have been down there doing their washing. And I don't know how Yowie's got brought up. He didn't tell me. If I see him again, I'll get the proper story. And he said that wherever they're living on army land, they're too scared to go outside of their house unless they're armed. Because they said there's some weird stuff going on there. Now, I've never heard of stuff like this before. That I don't know. Maybe there's just weird stuff and it's freaking them out. I don't know. But obviously they believed it was Yowie's and they were doing weird stuff around their houses. So... So he wasn't too sure. He just said the bottom of Canungra. So I know there's houses down the bottom where they've knocked them down, but then there's like newer ones as you go up Beachmont Road. So I don't know. Actually, that's where I'm. The place where I've been going is on Beachmont Road. It's halfway up the hill. A lot of people all know where it is. It's directly across from the army, army base. Anyway, I'm sure I'll get. There's heaps of people living now. I'll get a lot of stories out of all these people over, over the, over the years. <laughs> All right, let's go to this sighting that happened at Mount Cotton. All right. Oh, yeah, by the way, guys, if you just want to um, 
this is my group, Yowie Signings Australia, Facebook group. If you just want to um, share your story, you can do it there or go to Yowie Sightings Australia at gmail.com and you can message me there, guys. All right, so this is where this sighting was around here, around this scout hall. I remember my um, son taking his kids on a footy camp here. They camped here probably the same, I don't know, five or six years ago. I'll have to ask him. All right, so we'll get on with the story. We'll just leave that there. So he's going to have a look. Actually, let's do this. Just have a look. So he's going to have a look. Well, that mightn't work. I shouldn't do that. Might wreck it. All right, I'll get on with the story, guys. Okay, before anyone says it, I know what I'm about to share, especially the location makes no sense. But anyway, this was our encounter. My family and I were camping in a place called Seniors Ridge, Mount Cotton, Karingal Scout Camp. Just below the campsite, there is an outdoor chapel. The track up to the chapel was covered in small sticks of about two foot pushed into the ground, covering a length of about 50 meters of the track. The sticks were about an inch to two inches apart. Didn't know what to make of this, so just continued setting up camp. Around the campfire that night, we could hear a large piece of timber being dragged. This went on for about one hour. It stopped. Thought it was strange, but just thought we would investigate it tomorrow. It's about 2 a.m. We're all woken by a loud, piercing, screaming howl that penetrated your whole being being we all sat bolt upright from our sleep and just looked at each other our dogs in the back of the ute were weren't making a noise as quickly as the scream started it disappeared couldn't see a thing moving around the campsite or in the direction of the scream about half an hour later the exact same screaming howl from the same location started up again from behind the roofed area and the picnic tables on the Seniors Ridge campsite. Funny thing. Funny thing though, and I don't know why, but none of us felt threatened. But at the same time, we were all on edge and alert. This continued on and off for about four hours. Needless to say, we did not get any sleep that night. Come morning, sitting around the fire having a cup of coffee, we let our dogs out of the back of the ute and all of them bolted over to, to the area where the screaming howls were coming from. We went over with them to investigate. There is a concrete slab that drops about one foot off one of the sides and there was a wet area from the provided tap where the kids were filling up their water guns. Just on the drop off in the soft ground there was a 15 inch human like footprint just the one our dogs were just going crazy sniffing out the whole area that had been heavily trampled we couldn't believe what we were seeing and none of us none of it made sense because this is mount cotton and we're in the middle of brisbane what the this started an investigation into the immediate area and where we all heard the dragging noise on the back side of the seniors ridge there um mutable walking mutable walking tracks going off in all different directions we could we quickly picked up the track of the drag log it went on for about two kilometers then just disappeared on the way back to camp on a different track we started to notice about 30 meters to the right running parallel parallel with the re return track there were several trees about three to five inches in diameter snapped off both shoulder height both showed on in the place upside down in the canopy of another tree at about 10 meters of height. We stayed at this campsite for three more days. Nothing else happened. The experience happened seven years ago. We have recently returned to Mount Cotton Scout Camp and all of the campsites in that area around Seniors Ridge have been shut down to the public. We walked around the area and were surprised to see that after all these year, after all this time, the hanging dead tree root bulb is still there. Yeah, that's that's pretty full on. All right, thanks thanks for sharing that. 
All right, what we're going to do now is um, I'll read. Um, there's a few comments from the group. We'll go read some of them. All right, I'll just quickly read out a couple. Of so when one guy wrote, I had an experience in Ormiston, which isn't too far away. Tell me about it. The training experience, please. I saw your comment on another post. I have family in Ormiston and I bushwork there often. My experience was in between Ormiston and Cleveland along the train line. I was on the train and for whatever reason, we'd come to a stop midsection. It was then that I got the feeling that I was being watched. So I looked at my left in the direction of the travel into the foliage and there it was. It was almost eye level with me. So I'm guessing it was super tall. It was stocky and muscular, had reddish brown fur, hair, had a greyish skin tone and dark eyes. It didn't come across as malicious or threatening, but more inquisitive. It was gone by the time we'd gone to Cleveland and turned around to head back towards the city. I know that I've seen something because it still sticks out in my mind and I can still point, still pinpoint the spot all these years later. That's amazing. There's quite a lot of inaccessible pockets of swamp between Ormiston and Wellow. I've only seen a naked guy spring from the mangroves and bolt towards Ormiston a couple of years ago. It was probably the sex pests that were arrested harassing women on local walking tracks. I can't say that I heard about that, however. Only, let's keep going. 